All right, happy Wednesday to all of my confirmation students. You are dearly loved by the God who created you. We know that because of Jesus, you're loved by your church, by your pastor, by your small group leaders, and we are so glad that you are making this a part of your day. I love confirmation because it helps us, even me as an adult, think through things, helps me learn and grow in my relationship with God, and we hope, DCE Nikki and I hope, that this time that you're spending in confirmation is a blessing to you. It's helping you get a better handle on God and who he is and what he's about. We're kicking off something new today. We're going to talk these next two weeks about what you do when you mess up. Have you messed up recently, made a mistake, had a moment that you lived through, it was a decision or a word you spoke that you'd like to have back. And because of the mistake you made or what you said, something's broken. I got an ornament to show you. This is a Christmas ornament. Do you see it? It's supposed to say Noel, right? But unfortunately, here's the N part that broke. It's broken, so it's not the way it's supposed to be anymore. That's what happens when we mess up. We take things the way they're supposed to be, the way God designed them to be, and we break them. We mess them up. We do that by the things that we choose, by our attitudes, our thoughts, our words, our deeds. Have you had a moment recently where you made a mistake and you'd like to have that moment back, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And the first thing I want to ask you is, in those moments when you realized, hey, I really messed up, what do you do? How do you respond to that? I want to let you know that it's really common for people to do a lot of things, different things when they mess up. Sometimes people are tempted to try to cover it up, to hide it to hope that nobody sees it, or, or maybe you feel like you disappear into your room and just kind of forget it ever happened. doesn't really do anything with what you did besides conceal it or cover it up or hope that nobody finds out about it. That's what some people do, even adults. Another thing that people do is blame. I think that's a really common one. When you find out that you messed up, the simplest thing to do is to say, well, my sister made me do it. Or the reason I did it was for this reason. Way back in the garden, when God makes Adam and Eve and gives them this beautiful garden, Adam and Eve mess up. God confronts Adam. And Adam says, Eve made me do it. And then Eve said, the serpent made me do it. Blame is epidemic, which means it's everywhere. Everybody does it. Sometimes people try to hide it and cover it up or conceal it. Sometimes people blame other people for it. Another thing that people try to do is I'll make up for it. Like you get caught not being truthful to your parents and you say, I'll do the dishes for a whole month. Like, is there something I can do to make up for what I did wrong? People hide it, cover up, conceal it, blame it, explain it away, try to make up for it. Those are all things that even adults try to do when they mess up. Awesome confirmation students, I have good news for you. God offers something entirely different to do with your mess ups. The Bible talks about it this way. It's in 1 John chapter 1. So if you have a Bible... I'd love for you to open right now. It's almost at the back of your Bible, right before the last book, which is Revelation. You'll see a, sm a few small books. One of them is called 1 John. Not John, but 1 John. There'll be a one in front of it. And 1 John is a letter, and it says this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and there's no truth in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that a great verse? If we think that we don't have sin, we're lying to ourselves because all of us have done broken things. 
we're lying. But if we confess it, if we tell God about it, he will, ready, forgive us and cleanse us. The Bible doesn't talk about hiding it or covering it up or blaming it or explaining it away or trying to make up for it. It just simply says, hey, confess it to God and he delivers to you forgiveness. That's in the Bible. That's God's promise for you. Is that awesome or what? Now, let's go find your catechism, okay? Because we're going to see what the catechism says about confession. So I'm going to give you about a 20-second break. Go find your catechism, and we're going to open it up to confession, okay? I'm going to go find mine. All right, did you get your catechism? I got mine. This is what mine looks like. All right, so you're going to go, if yours looks like mine, I want you to go to the section that talks about confession. So you're going to go to the table of contents, Luther's small catechism. You're going to go to confession. And in this book, it's page 25. All right, so I want to look at this with you real quick. Page 25 talks about this. And the first thing it says is, what is confession? And this is where, remember, Martin Luther writes this book, this catechism, to help us understand sometimes these really complicated parts of of God and following God and knowing God. And, And what's beautiful about this catechism is it really makes it simple and understandable. So it asks the question that we would ask, okay, what is confession? How do we do it? And it says confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, which is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. So remember then, confession has two parts. First, we confess our sins. We just talked about that. We say, hey, God, I'm sorry. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. And then the second part is we receive absolution. That's a fancy way of saying forgiveness. Another way for that is God says it's like it never happened. And we receive that from the pastor. That's me for you. That's why we make this a part of our church service every Sunday. To say, God, we are sorry. And then I, as a messenger of God, get to announce to you, God has forgiven you because of Jesus Christ. And we believe that because God in his Bible promises this is true. It goes on to say another question. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. So as you think about what sin should I confess, first of all, think about the things that you know about. Hey, I remember when I was really short with my sibling, or I remember when I gossiped about somebody else, or I remember when I didn't tell the truth. But if you're having a tough time remembering, it's good to think about the Ten Commandments. What commandments has God given me to follow, and how have I not followed those? And that's really the next question. Which are these? Consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother? No, you're not those yet. Son or daughter? That's you. Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered? rude or quarrelsome have you hurt someone by your words or deeds have you stolen big been negligent that means like haven't done what you were supposed to do wasted anything or done any harm what's the answer to that question for you i'm guessing you have we all have holy cow we all have even your pastor your parents 
people that you think are so awesome maybe everyone has sinned and falls short of what god wants us to do but remember those good news as much as we we want to hide it cover it up blame it away explain it away try to make up for it god says don't do any of that just come to me confess your sins and receive forgiveness I'm going to do that with uh, my ornaments. This ornament broke around Christmas, so I'll take some glue and I'll put it all back together. And it's going to be like it never happened. We'll hang it on the tree and no one's ever going to know. That's what God does. He kind of puts us back together, forgives us. I just hope that you receive that today. And in fact, I want to invite you, this is going to be part of the Google form, the last question is going to be just to take a moment to say a prayer. You don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to write it out. But just talk to God. Acknowledge to God what you've done wrong. Confess your sins to him. And then receive forgiveness. Say to yourself, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you that you've taken away my sin and you no longer hold it against me. It's like it never happened. That's what's awesome about being a Christian. You are forgiven. If you confess your sins, you are forgiven. All right, take a look at the Google form. We've got a few short questions for you to answer. Nikki's going to build off of this next week. Have a great day.